And now it is my pleasure to introduce our speaker this morning, who will take us on the path, on a firm footing, our own beloved Reverend John. Please help me welcome him to the podium. Good morning, family. Good morning, Reverend John. And thank you, uh, Jen, for that lovely introduction. And it's lovely to see some people who haven't been out for a while out. And welcome home to some people who are visiting from the frozen north. And welcome, welcome, welcome to you all and to those who join us in consciousness on the World Wide Web. Uh, any of you know this uh, the Jamaican expression, I know every day at Christmas? <laughs> you ever heard it when you were a child? I was in the supermarket a couple of months ago and I heard a mother exasperated and overwrought saying to her child, look your picnic, don't bother me, I know every day at Christmas. And it took me right back to my own childhood. And I thought, where did we ever get this, this idea that to be merry and to be happy was somehow sinful and meant that you were up to no good, you know, as children. So I thought about that every day, a Christmas business. It, the original meaning was um, not every day comes up roses and merry and beautiful like Christmas, but our, our parents and grandparents, at least of my generation, used it as a warning. And the other one we used to hear was, chicken merry, hawk denier, meaning the chickens are having a great time in the barnyard and there's a hawk circling overhead waiting to put an end to your merriment. Well, you know, one, I'll never forget one midnight mass at Kingston Parish Church. I must have been seven or eight. Uh, my brother and I were having a merry Christmas because we sat with our dad. And my mother um, sat in the choir, which was a little way off, but she could see us. That was the hawk. And then she commented to daddy after mass that if she didn't understand why I danced and I enjoyed the service. There was a lot of giggling and merriment, you know. So I said, but why, why do we say Merry Christmas if we're not supposed to be married? So I got slapped for that. <laughs> then, but we were singing. While shepherds washed their socks by night, all seated round the tub, the angel of the Lord came down and they began to scrub. So we had a version of every carol and every Christmas song, so we loved church and enjoyed Midnight Mass thoroughly. No, but I know every day at Christmas. Friends, we need to know that this merriment that we speak of, where does it come from and why should we be, be joyous at a time like this? We are joyous because really and truly, it is a season of celebrating the coming of the light in human hearts and human consciousness. And thank God, you know, we as a, a people are allowed to, to worship and to how we want and, and, and in whatever form we like. But there was a time when um, Christmas was almost forbidden. It was outlawed. And there was a great persecution of people who, who celebrated the gift of the Christ, the coming of, the coming of the light. The Celtic people and the ancient people celebrated the, the sun, the S-U-N of God, the sun God. But of course, the Christians made that the S-O-N of God. See the similarity? And Christmas Day came three days after the winter solstice, which is interesting because when they, you had the winter solstice on the 21st or 22nd, and then on the 25th, it was when people began to be able to see the first light of the sun. And so it meant a great deal to the ancient people to, to have the coming of the light into their lives because it meant a coming of warmth and of new life and a new birth. So there's a parallel there between the Christian concept of the coming of the sun and the, the ancient worship of the earth and nature and the coming of the S-U-N. So <laughs> one of my favorite carols, and I heard it playing when I sat down to write this encouragement, which I've titled, every day at Christmas. And I was hearing, oh, come all ye faithful. And I thought, this is a call for people who believe. And Bethlehem 
like Jerusalem, represents the place of peace that we seek in our inner hearts and in our souls. And so this is a call, come to the place where the light is born, where peace finds new birth in your heart and, and celebrate with us that coming of the S-U-N and the S-O-N. This evening at our evening of sorrow and song, and I hope you'll all be here, we will also be treated to another of my favorites, which is O Holy Night. And the line in it that really reaches into my heart and opens it up is fall on your knees, O hear the angel voices. And now modern uh, uh, singers and musicians say, O hear the angels voices. It's not plural. It's O hear the angel voices. And as you know, Angels represent our highest thoughts. Um, thoughts of love, thoughts of forgiveness, and thoughts of peace. So just as the full inn where Mary hoped to give birth represents our full egos, so full of the materialism and the having and the getting and the, uh, the wanting that we have no room in, our, in the inn of our lives for this precious, tender, beautiful thing called the Christ, the idea of our sonship and daughtership with the one presence and the one power, which is the living spirit almighty. And so if we listen to the various Christmas songs and Christmas carols, there is a, a meaning behind a lot of them, which, are, which is just deeper than just what the words are saying. And I'll come to that in a little while. Jesus the son, was, can be born in, in our, what I want to say, our primal, stable nature. If we have no room in the inn of our egos and our getting and our wanting and our accumulation of, of earthly and material things, we can allow that precious Christ presence and power to be reborn in our stable nature, in the, in the part of us that knows that there is on a level in our consciousness, a humility and a purity which is untouched by the passage of time, untouched by the affairs of the world, untouched by the human side. It is the angelic side. It's a side that looks to the light and proclaims the light in all our hearts and all our lives. And so Jesus grew to be the way sure and our divinity, our Christhood, was the way he showed. The master teacher said that the first commandment is to love the Lord thy God with thy heart, with your mind, with your soul, and with all your strength. That's a, that's a strong love, eh? And you love something with all your heart and all your, your mind and all your soul and all your strength mean you really love it, or love that person, or love that idea, or love that principle which is the principle of Godhood. And the second he said is like unto it. And what was that? To love your neighbor as yourself. And it didn't say just love those in your tribe and love those that share your ideas. It said love everybody who you come into contact with. Because all are your neighbor. What a wonderful, eternal, and, and, and beautiful, pure thought to love everybody and to see in each person the principle of Christhood that says, when you meet somebody, here is a son or here is a daughter of God. And if we did that, you know, then we would begin to look at each other through different eyes. Uh, at the uh, prison where Reverend Michael and I are uh, students of, of life, really, I think we learn more than we teach. Um, this is one of the, of the, of the, the ideas that I, we try to discuss and to express that everybody is your brother. Everybody is divine. And if you are feeling that, really feeling that deep down, then you wouldn't lift a hand to hurt your brother. You would, you would lift a hand to help him up, yes? And so this is, this is perhaps the message that the Jesus born in Bethlehem uh, brought for all humankind. And it is the promise of the beloved I am never out of sight of that child of mine who always thinks of me and looks for me everywhere. Lord Krishna, who was born a prince in India thousands of years before Jesus, said the same thing. 
I quote, he who perceives me everywhere and beholds everything in me never loses sight of me, nor do I lose sight of him. Can we begin to see the Christ, the principle of, of beauty and holiness and holy, wholeness and joy and truth everywhere we look? And it really takes some practice. You know, it, it takes some practice. I know because I can tell you I'm at the traffic light and my window is down and I see a young man coming towards me and I, my first inclination is to press the up button. You know, it's, it's almost automatic. We're so programmed to distrust other people. And so I've started to just remind myself, here is a son of God, you know, and I've started to call them God's son. You know, hello, Godson, which of course makes them call me Godfather, which is nice. <laughs> Friends, this is what we're talking about when we talk about every day of Christmas. And every day can be Christmas if we practice this presence and power in the people we encounter along life's path. And this is what I want us to do every day of this Christmas to see God everywhere. Can we say together, God is all there is? Can we say that? God, God is all there is. In a half voice, God is all there is. In a whisper, God is all there is. Now say it in your heart. God is truly all there is. And this brings me to another of my favorite Christmas songs, The Twelve Days of Christmas. Did you know that The Twelve Days of Christmas was originally written as a coded message among Christians in England during a time of religious persecution when Catholicism was outlawed in the 16th to 18th centuries? The song, The Twelve Days of Christmas, was written as a kind of secret catechism for the Catholics of the time, and it would be sung in public without any fear of being um, arrested or prosecuted. It was like a mnemonic or a learning, a memory aid to remind them of some of their um, Catholic principles. So each verse refers to a teaching of Catholic church doctrine, with the partridge being Christ, who died on a tree, and the true love being, of course, God. God the Father, who gave all gifts. So the 12 days are the 12 days between Christmas Day, the 25th, and the birth, which is the birth of Jesus, and the Epiphany, January 6th, the day when Christians celebrate the arrival of the Magi, or the wise men, and the revelation of Christ as the light of the world. So those are the 12 days. And each element in the song is a, is a code word for religious truth. The partridge in the pear tree, as I said, is Jesus. The two turtle doves are the Old and New Testaments. Three French hens stand for faith, hope, and love. The four calling birds are the four gospels. The five gold rings recall the Hebrew Torah, the law, or the Pentateuch, which are the first five books of the Old Testament. The six geese are laying stand for the six days of creation. The seven swans are swimming represent the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. The eight maids are milking are the eight beatitudes. Nine ladies dancing are the nine fruits of the spirit. The ten lords are leaping are the ten commandments. Eleven pipers piping represent the eleven faithful apostles. And twelve drummers drumming symbolized the twelve points of doctrine in the Catholic Apostles' Creed. Interesting, eh? So when people learned it, they would have in mind the underlying meaning where they could go merrily through the streets of England singing on the 12 days of Christmas and no, none of the authorities would suspect that they were really deep in their hearts praising God. There's a journalist called Val Lauda who in a 2014 article titled When Celebrating Christmas Was Against the Law, and this was in America, writes and I quote, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote in a journal entry dated December 25, 1856, and this is what Longfellow wrote. Not a very Merry Christmas. We are in a transition state about Christmas here in New England. 
The old Puritan feeling prevents it from being a cheerful, hearty holiday, though every year makes it more so." Unquote. Lauder continues, across the pond, Charles Dickens, A Christmas Carol, published December 19, 1843, was reconciling the centuries-old war over Christmas. The two sides clearly shown, battle lines drawn in the opening pages when Scrooge's nephew drops by. A Merry Christmas, Uncle. God save you, cried a cheerful voice. Bah, said Scrooge. Humbug. Don't be cross, Uncle, said the nephew. What else can I be, returned the uncle, when I live in such a world of fools as this? Merry Christmas? Out upon Merry Christmas! If I could work my will, said Scrooge indignantly, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled with his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through his heart, he should. Unquote. Uncle, pleaded the nephew. Nephew, returned the uncle sternly, Keep Christmas in your own way, and let me keep it in mine. Keep it. Keep it, retorted the, the, uh, 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 Scrooge's nephew. But you don't keep it. That, of course, was before the visits from the ghosts of Christmas past, present, and yet to come that wrought the 180-degree turn in Scrooge that, with the help of the Cratchits and Tiny Tim, gave us the Christmas we know and love today." On end of that quote from Lauder. My friends, thank God we do live in a time and in a country where we are free to worship and to sing what we like, how we like. And so I've put in your program, I think there's a flyer on the back of your program, um, a new thought version of the 12 days of Christmas, which I thought we could have some fun um, singing together. Um, but before we sing it, I want us just to, um, to review um, the, uh, the challenge for each day. So on the first day of Christmas, Spirit said to me, what? I'm not convinced. Uh -huh, it's the biggest frog to swallow. You really have to start the forgiveness um, practice. On the second day of Christmas, Spirit said to me, third day, the fourth day, on the fifth day of Christmas, Spirit said to me, I am not convinced. Yes. On the sixth day, on the seventh, on the eighth, on the ninth, I'm fasten right there so with that one. But I'm working on it. On the tenth day, and on the eleventh, and the twelfth. Actually, you know, your life is already an affirmation. How you live your life really is a constant reaffirmation of who you think you are and who you think other people are. So here we have 12 challenges. Are you up for it? Yes. So I'd like us to, to sing it through. I thought I was going to have Liz to come and sing it to me, but I don't see her. So we, we, uh, Maestro? On the first day of Christmas, Spirit said to me, start to forgive and be free. On the second day of Christmas, Spirit said to me, love everyone and start to forgive and be free. On the third day of Christmas, Spirit said to me, cast out fair love everyone and start to forgive and be free. On the third day of Christmas, Spirit said to me, Pray every day, cast out fair love everyone and start to forgive and be free. On the fifth day of Christmas, Spirit said to me, God's all there is. Pray every day, cast out fair love, everyone, and 
and start to forgive and be free. On the sixth day of Christmas, Spirit said to me, Look on the bright side, God's all there is. Pray every day, cast out fair love, everyone, and start to forgive and be free. On the seventh day of Christmas, Spirit said to me, Always be thankful, look on the bright side, God's all there is. Pray every day, love, hope, fair love everyone, and start to forgive and be free. On the eighth day of Christmas, Spirit said to me, no, you're abundant. Always be thankful. Look on the bright side. God's all there is. Pray every day. Cast out fair love, everyone. And start to forgive and be free. On the ninth day of Christmas, Spirit said to me, Strive to be patient, always be thankful, always be thankful, look on the bright side, God, oh, there is. May every day cast out fair love, everyone, and start to forgive and be free. On the seventh day of Christmas, Spirit said to me, Strive to be patient, know your robots, know your robots, don't you know what you say? Look on the bright side, God's all there is. Pray every day, cast out fair love, everyone, and start to forgive and be free. Which one? On the eleventh day of Christmas, Spirit said to me, Help those who need it. Do meditation. Strive to be patient. Know you're abundant. Always be thankful. Look on the bright side. God, oh, there is. Pray every day. Cast out fair love, everyone. And start to forgive and be free. On the twelfth day of Christmas, Spirit said to me, Say affirmations, help those who need it. Do meditation, strive to be patient. Know you're abundant, always be thankful. Look on the bright side, God's father is. Pray every day, cast out fair love, everyone, and start to forgive and be. Thank you, Sandy. How was that? Well, so here is your assignment. <laughs> right now, right, right now, right here, I wanted you to choose one of these 12 challenges that you would like to improve on. I just told you, patience is mine. May I have to work on it hard, hard. Choose one right now that you want to work on. It doesn't mean that you don't do all of them and you don't have all of them, but one that you want to really work on improving. You got, everybody got? Yes. Now here's a challenge. You're going to work on that challenge from now until the 6th of January. And every day you will sing that line, the line you chose, and go back to the first day of Christmas. So, let us say you chose Always be thankful. You will do every day. Thank you, Reverend Michael. On the seventh day of Christmas, Spirit said to me, Always be thankful. Look on the bright side. God's all there is. Pray every day. Cast out fair love, everyone. And start to forgive and be free. Now, don't cheat and say you, you chose the first one, you know. <laughs> so you're going to sing. Somebody else, give me one, the one that they chose. Give me one that you chose. Yeah? No, you're abundant. Number eight. On the eighth day of Christmas, Spirit said to me, No, you're abundant. Always be thankful. Look on the bright side. God's all there is. 
fast. Pray every day, cast out fear, love everyone, and start to forgive and be free. Somebody over here, give me one that you chose. Number nine. Together. On the ninth day of Christmas, the Spirit said to me, Strive to be patient. Know you're abundant. Always be thankful. Look on the bright side. God's all there is. Pray every day. Cast out fear. Love everyone. And start to forgive and be free. Wow. Yeah. Pray every day. I don't want to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pray every day is number four. Now can I hear your reverend? On the fourth day of Christmas, Spirit said to me, Pray every day, cast out fair, love everyone, and start to forgive and be free. Thank you. Thank you, Maestro. Friends, let us claim the glory of the season of Christmas as our own and make room in the inner of our consciousness for the childlike trust that will open the manger of our hearts to the Christ and attune our lives to the angel song. We can each enter that state of consciousness. Indeed, we must do so, for that is the reason we came onto this plane of, of activity. Let us say together, today the Christ idea is born in my heart. Together, today the Christ idea is born in my heart. I claim the glory of the season as my own. I claim the glory of the season as my own and make room in my consciousness for the Prince of Peace. And make room in my consciousness for the Prince of Peace. So today the Christ idea is born in my heart. Today, the Christ idea is born in my heart. I claim the glory of this season as my own and make room in my consciousness for the Prince of Peace. I claim the glory of this season as my own and make room in my consciousness for the Prince of Peace. And my friends, believe me, as you do every day at Christmas. Namaste. Namaste.